Matt, the next case this evening is VA 2016-16 Brown Development. Yes, sir. This is a rezoning request for 7.42 acres um, to community commercial. Um, if you look on the back on the screen, it's also in your packet. It's that the rectangular area in the center is currently split zone between highway commercial and RM. The highway commercial portion is about six acres. The RM portion is 1.42 acres. Uh, the CH is a down zoning to CC. The RM would be an up zoning to CC. Um, the purpose is to create a development plan here that it combines with office and commercial as well as multifamily. Uh, we talked about at the work session, multifamily is not allowed in CH, it is allowed in RM, uh, but it is also allowed in CC, hence the request for CC zone. Um, this is the former Elks Lodge property way out at the east end, excuse me, the west end of Atri Road. This is an area from several years ago. You can see the rooftop of the Elks Lodge building. Um, used to encompass this property and the property to the north. Uh, back in 2009, the property to the north was rezoned from RP to C, excuse me, to RM to allow for the Grove Apartments. Uh, we also had a little dog leg to that rezoning request, which is the RM portion of the subject property. The purpose of that back in 2009 was to allow the possibility of the apartment complex having a main entryway from Bay Tree Road. Um, they were able to avoid that and pull their interest to strip the off of the Bay Tree Road extension, which is sort of like a frontage road right along I-75. Um, I do not have a more recent aerial for you, um, but if you drive up down I-75, you can't miss the apartments that are there. <laughs> um, the site plan in your packet is very, very conceptual, I underscore the word conceptual. This is simply a, a demonstration to show how a mixture of retail and multifamily residential uses might cohabitate there in an effort also to generate some numbers. Uh, what this site plan is showing you is 24 four-bedroom apartments combined with about 34,000 square feet of office and retail space. And you can see there's room for a little bit more. Um, what the applicants really are wanting to pursue is a planned development proposal that they may come back to you at a later date where they blend the site plan a little more creatively and effectively with a mixture of these uses. And staff certainly encourages them to do that. What they're interested in currently is getting the zoning in place. Remember our plan development process uses the underlying zoning to dictate the uses and the densities. So without the CC zoning in place, they would not be able to do the level of multifamily that they would like. So hence the site plan, just to give you some ideas of the scale and the numbers. Um, Zoning-wise, this area is dominated by commercial zoning, mainly to the south of Bay Tree Road, that is the back side of the Drury development. Um, if you look at the polygons there, the road that separates the hotel from the Olive Garden restaurant, um, pursuant to Drury's master plan, it is proposed, actually required by variance approval, to extend all the way to Bay Tree Road. Um, so there will be an entrance off of Bay Tree for that development. The applicants are desiring to coordinate with them, <coughs> share the interest points on Bay Tree, and work together on both sides of the road. Um, to the north, of course, is established multifamily. There is single family zoning to the north and west. So this is sort of in that transition zone area between commercial to the south, residential to the north. Comprehensive plan-wise, character area, this is community activity center, which is the intensive uh, designation of the area around about Austin Mall. Uh, it points along St. Augustine Road. It is not quite as intensive as the regional activity center, which is all the interchange and high density uses. But commercial zoning is certainly appropriate in community activities. Um, staff found all of this consistent with the comprehensive plan. Our standards for exercise of zoning power, which are there in your packet, and we are recommending approval. Richard, any questions for staff? I've got one. Uh, Matt, what, where do we stand on the flyover? I know it's been on the back burner or done away with or whatever, but is that taken into consideration here? Would it affect it? Do we need to consider? It could possibly room? affect it when, if it were to come into play. Yeah. We've also discussed alternatives, um, which in our discussions with the applicant was an underpass under R75 instead of an over. I uh, know going over the interstate, it is an engineering nightmare with slopes on the west side. Um, going under the interstate makes it a little bit easier, but either of those would have to be coordinated with Georgia DOT when they finally get around to rebuilding exit 18. Right. Um, 
Well, I knew it was supposed to tie in to James fly over and kind of tie into the James Road around there because way back when, when that subdivision went in there, that was all. And it's been talked about for a number of years. Um, the only thing that would really affect them is the extreme southern edge of their property. They might need to reserve some land for future right away. Um, but the bulk of the land would not be affected by it, um, other than possibly visually. Um, underpass would be my personal preference. I think engineering wise it works um, long term, a little better. Um, then you eliminate the visual. Uh, this would be an on ramp to I 75 from Bay Tree Road going north. And so the corner of their property would be affected potentially. <coughs> That's it. Do we need to do anything with that? That is all going to be taken care of during the review process. Um, when they come through with their plan development proposal, depending on the, their design, we might get into some discussion about it then. But it so won't affect us. So won't be it does there. not affect the zoning case. Okay. All right. No more. What about Oak Street or Bay Tree there? Is there anything in the city right now working to, to repay that or widen that? Because it's becoming a nightmare coming out of the apartment complex. I, knew, I know it has moved up the priority list for paving because the pavement that is there is not in very good shape. Um, surprisingly, that segment of Bay Tree west of Morto is a local road, not like the rest of Bay Tree. Um, and the main reason is because it doesn't really go anywhere. It dead ends of the interstate. Only thing that has changed in the past five or six years is the traffic has gone up because of the apartments. Somebody needs to do a traffic count on that. And we change that. Correct. Hence the additional wear and tear on Bay Tree, and hence it's moving up the ladder of priorities. Um, I don't think the traffic demand is to the point it needs to be four lane, uh, but certainly improved to be a better two lane road. Yeah. You can you can light the two lane road side by, by putting that two feet on each side. And drainage becomes an issue with that too. I never really finished my supper. Everybody knows anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor, please state your name and address for the record. Mr. Cohn. Uh, my name is Jimmy Cohn. I'm the architect on the project. My address is 1806 Plum Street here in Valonso. Also in attendance with me is Matt Phelps, who is the uh, civil engineer working with us on this project. And we're here on behalf of the owner to answer any questions that y'all have about this project. I'm just glad to see it getting used. Mm -hmm. And what it looks like is going to be a productive one. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor? My name is Kerry K. Y. Y. Hinkle, H-I-N-K-L-E. I live at 2532 when this is circle. And I'm the president of the Lake Sherry Corner Association. If you could put up that previous map that showed the the uh, urinal uh, topography, yes, please. You know, keep going with the, with the physical. You'll see the lake there, and Lake Sherry states is that cul-de-sac that comes to the right side of the of the lake. We own that property adjacent to the cove on one side, and Oldwood Valley to the other side. We have no opposition to the proposal. However, we would ask that the certain stipulations be considered as a result of prior, prior contact or interactions with the code, which resulted in certain modifications, which the code willingly did to ensure that our property would be, would be accessed for one thing. Because of the lake, we have problems with people coming onto, into the lake and taking midnight swims. And the liability of that, you can imagine, is, is very tough. So we have no way to police it. So we ask that a fence be built along and so on. So there are some modifications that we have established with the code that we'd like the developers to consider. I don't believe there's anything significant having saw, seen the, the proposed uh, um, uh, plot that they that was presented. Um, so there's, it's simply a, a list of things that we'd like to have them consider. I don't believe, you know, unless you want me to read them, um, I'd rather just submit them and, and have those proposals and have the board ask that the uh, developers consider these requests and meet with the, the Lake Cherry Board in order to work out any disagreements that might arise. I think that's reasonable. Matt, what would, how do you feel this would be? If they give them to us, we can forward them on to the, the developer with the rate here if you want to hand it to them. 
The only comment I've got, I mean, there's nothing the city can really impose in terms of access and things between private properties. But I can tell you from a zoning standpoint, the RM next to R10 does not require much buffering. Uh, we're changing the RM to commercial greatly increases the amount of buffering that's required. Most of the time, developers put a fence in with that buffer to, in order to shrink the width of the buffer yard. So in one way, the rezoning to CC increases the buffering between these developments. You could put up the site plan. The other issue is, of course, if you look at a the other one where you see the layer. Aerial? Yeah. What I'm, what I'm pointing out, if you on the area, you'll see that the lake, uh, that the uh, Buena Vista Circle comes down towards the end of the lake. So the housing on that end is much closer to this lot than it was when the cove was developed, because the cove was on the north side, and this is going to coincide with the left side. So there's some concern about lighting and things of that sort, which might impose, you know, on, the, on that housing. Um, as I said, for most of it, these are sort of logical kinds of issues that we would direct in, in terms of fencing and lighting and, and what have you. I don't think anything's unreasonable. And we've had a really very good relationship with the code. We've had no problems with, with them. We did have some problems uh, with the hotel that was put out there because of their drainage, which went, because everything that comes off of that property comes onto our lake. So there is, the drainage issue is one of the biggest issues we'd be concerned about. Because we ran into this with a hotel, they refused to do anything, and frankly we had to sue them in order to get them to, to consider what they had done to our property. So we're in the midst of a lawsuit with the drawer in in order to rectify the problem on this one. So we are very concerned about drainage and things like that, which should not be a biggest problem there as it was with the, the stream that comes into the lake. I'm the president of the Association, and my name and address is on there. If the, if the developers would like to get a hold of me, you're more than welcome to uh, contact me. Everything you need is right there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this? Anyone here wishing to speak in opposition? There being none. Thank you very much, sir. Commissioners, any discussion we need to have on this? There being none, I will entertain a motion this time. Move we recommend approval of the change from CH and MR to CC zoning to the county, I mean to the city commission. I'm sorry. I'll second. So we have a motion from Mr. Colson, second Mr. Wild. Any discussion on the motion? I'd, I'd like to ask that one thing that we could put in there be added <clears throat> that you have downward and directional lighting away from the, the neighborhood there. That's one of the requests I have in the form. And that's already a code requirement. It's a code, it's a code requirement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Strike that now. Yeah. Go with your motion. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, you won't do it with this, you got to go like this now. <laughs> okay. So, no further discussion on that this time. All in favor, please say by raising your right hand. That's unanimous, Mr. Carmelo. Next item is Matt is.